Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Four cores, six cores, eight cores. How are you supposed to know which to buy? Today, we're gonna take a look at that topic with a detailed discussion and a bunch of benchmarks. I've been saying for a while now that eight cores is where it's at. If you want a premium experience, some future proofing, the ability to multitask, and frankly, don't wanna to have to worry about it, then you've already got your answer. You don't have to watch the rest of this, although I certainly would appreciate it if you did. Now, there are certainly different generations of eight core CPUs, and we will talk about that later in this video. But as a general rule, if you have the money, eight cores. The more complex question is, do you actually need eight cores? Is whatever you're doing with the computer going to take advantage of them? Do you need them for current games? Do you need them for productivity? Or is it really just a future-proofing thing? The answer to that question is complex and deep. The rabbit hole goes down pretty far, but we're gonna try to keep this crazy simple. As I said, if you've got the money, run, don't walk, get eight cores, do not pass go, do not collect $200, although you'll need it for a Ryzen 7. But in any case, it really is the best long-term choice if your budget will allow. On the other hand, if your budget is tight, if $50 to $100 more is a big deal, if you're looking to get maximum value out of a very limited set of resources, then go ahead and get a six core CPU. A six core CPU will play all current games well enough and it will play most future games well enough. It's not as smooth, it's not gonna be quite as nice, it's a compromise choice. But if budgets are tight and you'd otherwise spend that $50 or $100 on a better graphics card or more RAM or more storage, then yeah, a six core CPU is fine. Let me be 100% clear. That last point is about new purchases that you're making today, not about existing computer upgrade advice, which is a separate conversation. If you currently own a two or four core CPU and you're looking to make a new purchase today, get the eight core if you can afford it. But if you already have a six core CPU, perhaps you bought the first generation Ryzen 5 1600 two and a half years ago, and your question today is, well, do I need eight cores today? No, that's a very different point. Most people who have six core CPUs today, I would recommend keeping them, unless you're doing 4K video editing or you're trying to live stream on Twitch the latest and greatest AAA games. But for most people, if you currently own a six core chip, you can keep it for a while yet. I would just skip it if at the end of 2019, you're making a new purchase. For the most part, we're discussing games when it comes to these core counts. Putting games aside, if we're talking about productivity work, such as Blender, if you're gonna do MATLAB simulations, if you're doing 4K video editing and rendering, all of those tasks generally tend to scale very well with additional cores and additional threads. Buy all that you can afford. You can absolutely run Blender and you can run MATLAB and you can run a variety of productivity programs without any problem whatsoever on even a four core chip, but they'll just run much faster on six cores and faster yet again on eight. And frankly, if you're doing that stuff seriously, allow me to introduce you to the Ryzen 9 3900X or maybe even 3950X, but that's outside the scope of this video. Those scale well, buy more if you can afford it, but for games, they're more of a nice to have at the moment rather than a required. On the flip side, when it comes to games, there's the other end of the scale. Do you wanna play Minecraft and The Sims 4? Do you wanna play some pinball games or maybe a casual game of World of Tanks? You don't need a six or an eight core CPU for that, even if you're watching YouTube while you're doing it. A four core, eight thread CPU is plenty, and for some of you, a two core, four thread chip will do just fine. It is very easy to make generalized statements about, oh yes, games, the new games need eight core CPUs. Which new games? Fancy AAA games such as Ghost Recon Breakpoint or World of Tanks? Those are two very different games that have two very different hardware requirements. In our testing today, we have four different CPUs to show you in the charts, starting at the Ryzen 3 1300X, four core, four thread CPU, the Ryzen 5 1500X, four core, eight thread CPU, the Ryzen 5 1600X, six core, 12 thread CPU, and the Ryzen 7 1700X, eight core, 16 thread chip. 
They are all first generation Ryzen chips, so the per core per clock performance is basically the same between all of them. You're just getting more of them, and this will let you see in a variety of games and programs, some built-in benchmarks, some live gameplay that I'll show you how well they scale with additional cores. We are testing this today on the ASUS ROG Strix X470-F motherboard. All the CPUs were run at stock speeds. We have a nice Scythe Mugen 5 aftermarket tower cooler. Temps are very nice on this. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 MHz CL16. XMP was turned on. That's the only overclock that was actually applied to the system. And then we used the Gigabyte RX 5700 XT 8GB gaming overclocked video card, which is a nice 400R mid-range option, powerful enough to uplift the performance so that we're really testing the CPUs, but not so powerful that everybody goes, why are you putting a 1200R RTX 2080 Ti on these things? Which would be silly. So that's what we're using in our testing today. I'll have a few more thoughts and a conclusion at the end of the benchmarks, so please stick around for that. Make sure you subscribe for more videos like this one. And with all that being said, on with the benchmarks. Our first benchmark is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. These are going to be cut kind of short because I did a first voiceover of these benchmarks and it was 30 minutes long. I had a lot to say, so we're not going to do that this time. I covered the issues with the Assassin's Creed Odyssey benchmark and the Call of Duty benchmark in previous comparisons to hyperthreading video and others. So I'm really not gonna get into great detail on them here other than to say that the benchmark chart you're about to see looks the way it does because of the video card and not the CPUs. I will do a follow-up at some point. I acknowledge the issues. And that is why we're cutting straight to the chart rather than showing you the rest of the benchmark. 56, 51, 60, 62. This is all graphics card issues right here. There should be a larger difference, but there's not. Let's get to the next one. Call of Duty Black Ops 4. How much CPU you need for this deeply, deeply depends upon what you're doing. The upper right-hand corner on the 1500X was tested on Chaos Domination, and the other three were tested on Nuketown. I know, I know, so ignore the 1500X. It's kind of squirrely because of it. The most interesting comparison is on the left-hand side between a 1300X 4-core four 4-thread four and a 1600X 6-core 12-thread. Now, to be sure, we're not using 100% of the 6-core 12-thread CPU, but it does help. And most importantly, it helps with smoothness and responsiveness, loading, and of course, we are running on a pristine test bench here with nothing running in the background whatsoever and a clean install of Windows and nothing in the task tray, which most people don't have computers like that. So a 1300X in theory will do it, but I wouldn't want to do it on a real machine. 94 frames per second average on the 1300X versus 104 on the 1600X. 42 to 52 on the 1% low and the 0.1% low because a respawns means nothing. I am interested in your feedback. What is the hardest map in terms of CPU usage with the most stuttering to test? I don't play this outside of benchmarking, so I don't have that level of expertise to be able to tell you. So I'm open to suggestions in the comment section below. I will make sure I do the same map in future testing. Counter-Strike Global Offensive runs on a potato. Stupid test for this, right? Clearly a four-core, four-thread chip running at 3.6 gigahertz is just fine. Prepare to be amazed. This is, these are replays of professional teams playing with an auto-switching between characters as they go. Live gameplay would be preferable, but I suck at this way too much in order to make that consistent. And because of the way the matches work, it, basically you'd just be watching other people play anyway because I would die much too quickly. If you take a look at the performance numbers on the screen, it's great. So what's the issue? Well, it all comes down to frame pacing, smoothness, input lag, and responsiveness, which FPS charts don't always show very well and average numbers don't show at all. 174 average on the 1300X versus 204 average on the 1700X. Clearly a no-brainer. But wait, look at the 1% low. 58 versus 100 or more on all the others. If you want smooth performance, if you're a competitive player, you actually do need more CPU in order to play this game. Now, 
Most people don't. Casual players, this 1300X is fine. But a serious player wants more. Far Cry New Dawn, the full price DLC to Far Cry 5. Part of the issues here are the same as Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Look at the clock speed of the graphics card here. You're going to see a benchmark chart that's going to demonstrate the problem with trying to go mid-range and use a, quote, reasonable graphics card. Bluntly, the RX 5700 XT drivers suck. Six months post-launch, they still suck. They'll probably be great one day, but they're not. So when I redo this test and iron out the variables, I promise you there'll be an RTX something or other on here, as opposed to this graphics card, which is incredibly inconsistent in how well it works. There is no way in the world the game should be this close and this flat. 74 to 74 and 55 to 55 and 83 and 83. Yes, buy an RTX 2070 Super. Fortnite Team Rumble also plays on a potato. Ridiculous test for four versus six versus eight cores, right? Well, I would say prepare to be amazed, but that would be a spoiler alert. It does run well, and for the average person who just wants to play for fun casually, sure, fine, four cores, four threads is enough. But you don't need an eight core, 16 thread chip. Frankly, even if you were going to live stream this, I mean, frankly, a six core, 12 thread chip would be enough for most people. It depends on how competitive you are and depends on how good you want the performance to be. If you look in the upper left-hand corner, we're at 100 frames per second, and it seems fine, although I will tell you it's not. It just seems that way, as you saw me die just there, but then again, some of that is my player skill. 163 frames per second average on the lowly 1300X. But if you look at the 1% low, a different story appears. 26 versus 71. The difference between four cores, four threads, and four cores, eight threads is night and day, even in Fortnite. More and more games, which previously were classified as being able to run on anything, really, I mean, they are, but how smooth of a game experience do you want? If you are doing anything in the background, live streaming, watching YouTube videos such as this one, if you are listening to music, doing voice chat, I would strongly, strongly recommend an upgrade to at least a 6-core, 12-thread CPU because while it looks like the 1500X will do it, keep in mind there's nothing else going on in this machine. So give yourself some headroom and get at least something like a 1600X. They're not expensive and it will give you a better experience for longer, even in games like Fortnite. When I first recorded this, I spent five minutes on this game alone. I went into great detail on my thoughts on the various CPUs in this game. I have nearly 50 hours played in this right now across a wide variety of machines. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I am enjoying it, so there you go. What I will say is that there is a world of difference between high frame rates and smoothness, and in this particular case, having a smooth experience makes a big, big difference. It also depends upon whether or not you multitask with your computer while you're playing or you just play the game. So I'll say this, if you have one monitor and you just play the game and you're not running anything in the background and you have a fairly clean configuration, six cores, 12 threads is where this game is at. It's really all that you need. You don't need eight cores, 16 threads. If you have a clean machine with nothing else running, I don't. I have a second monitor. I'm often watching YouTube videos or Twitch streams while I'm playing, listening to music, browsing the web. I am usually multitasking. And because of that, I have found that six cores, 12 threads is not enough. And it doesn't reflect in this benchmark because this is a test bench. But in the real world, I can tell you from experience, my i7 8700K six core, 12 thread Intel machine at 4.7 gigahertz is choppy when I have YouTube videos or Twitch streams playing on a second monitor. I would much prefer to run a Ryzen 7 2700X, even though the average frame rate will be lower, it will be smoother and better handle multitasking. So go for the eight core 16 thread chip if you're doing it, but you can get away with six cores 12 threads for a really, really smooth experience for the time being. I'm not even gonna bother rehashing the 1300X here. It's atrocious and terrible and basically unplayable. I followed that up with an i5 7600K in a previous video and it's better. Intel uh, four core, four thread at 4.5 gigahertz was better, but still it paused and hitched and wasn't that great. The 1500X looks better here. 
This chart makes it look better than it is. It's functional and playable, and if I had to, I would. Get yourself a 6-score 12-thread chip. If you want to play games like this, the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077, Watch Dogs Legion, etc., you're, frankly, the days of 4-core chips are over as far as I'm concerned for those upcoming games. Overwatch is an interesting one. It's a very well-optimized game. It runs on almost anything. Just adjust the resolution and detail settings, and so long as you're not operating on a Pentium 4 from 2003, it's going to run at some level of performance. Want to be competitive? Well, you need something a bit better than that, but not too high. You're going to find here that even a 4-core, four 4-thread four chip, a mid-range one such as the 1300X, does a remarkably good job. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for the vast, vast majority of people. And if you're a tournament player or a professional level player, well, you're not playing on that anyway, or shouldn't be, so who cares? You can see the performance for yourself on the screen. It's smooth no matter which chip we used. 144 frames per second on the low end, 186 on the high end. I'd like to point out that the 1700X was running at 3.5 gigahertz and the 1600X was running at 3.7 gigahertz. These are their stock out of the box clock speeds. And the reason it's faster is because of the faster clock speed because on a clean test bench, Overwatch doesn't care about an eight core chip. It makes zero difference whatsoever. Thus, the better performance on the 1600X. If you overclocked the 1700X to four gigahertz, it would have then run faster. It really is that simple. Now the 1500X and the 1300X are the same speed and the 1500X is at 3.6 gigahertz, only a hundred slower than the 1600X. But notice that it is actually running slower than the 3.5 of the 1700X but it's still amazing. 108 frames per second, 99% of the time is still amazing. So yes, I can legitimately say that a Ryzen 5 1600X is better, but unless you're really serious about it, frankly, you don't need six cores to play Overwatch. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is an interesting one because it will play on mid-range machines, but it will play much better on high-end machines. This game will legit use eight cores. It straight up will. And if you are concerned about the game's responsiveness and performance in the challenging portions where you're running and jumping and you've got timing issues and you got to make those precise moves just at the right time to avoid having her fall off a cliff, well, you definitely don't want to be using a four-core machine. I mean, yes, it will run and you can probably get used to it and you'll suffer through the, the various lag spikes. But when I show you the chart, six cores is the new minimum for a game like this. It will use more than eight threads. It will use all eight cores and some of the SMT, some of the hyper-threading on the Ryzen 7 1700X. There's another reason to have a better CPU, game load times. And I'm going to take this benchmark to sort of take the opportunity to point out that there's far more to a computer's performance than how many FPS it gives you. There is level load time, game load time, game save time. And I didn't cut any extra out or add anything in or change anything. The level load transition you're about, in fact, there was a big, huge spike on the uh, 1300X in the upper left-hand corner there. You saw it just a second ago. Notice that the 1300X hasn't loaded yet. This level, this section right here where it has to load the whole town, it's processing. Notice the numbers are changing. Notice the CPU's at 100%. It is really struggling to get all this put together. The 1500X with its hyper-threading does a much, much better job, but at the same clock speed. And it's absent, but it's absent because the, the poor CPU is just like, oh, please don't make me do this. This is the wrong game for me. I wasn't designed for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. No, you weren't, and you shouldn't be made to run it. No, you don't need a 1700X to play Shadow of the Tomb Raider. But if you are making a new purchase today, how long do you want your CPU to last? Yeah, finally, it loaded. I kid you not, it took that long to load the third section of the benchmark in Shadow of the Tomb Raider on a 1300X. It's absolutely savage. The huge spike right there. Big texture pop in and load in there. If you're buying today and you want your CPU to last you three to five years, do you want to buy something that just barely runs today? Look at the CPU usage on the 1600X. We're at 72, 73% there. We're using all six cores and we're using half of the SMT. The CPU is fully loaded. We're slammed at 100% on the 1500X. If you buy a six core chip today, 
it will work. Look here, the difference between the 1500X and the 1600X is not huge on the average, but look at the 1% low. 46 to 67 is huge. That is a big, big difference. The jump from a 1600X to a 1700X is 67 to 72. Big deal, you say. Clean test bench. There's nothing running on this machine. It is a clean install of Windows, clean drivers, clean everything. Everything has been closed in the background. That's not normal. In the real world, there'll be a bigger difference there. And this game is already one year old. It came out in 2018, not 19, came out in 2018. You want to play games in 2021 and you're buying a new CPU today and you're going to buy a six core chip? Why? This not That's not the direction of games. If you're buying new, buy an eight core chip. It's the future. If I sound very firm in my statement there, it's partly because the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox, oh, don't even start with me, Xbox Series X, oh my God, that's a horrible name. Why did they just not call it the Xbox Scarlet? It's beyond me. Whatever. The Xbox Series X, Microsoft can't name a retail consumer product to save their life. In any case, those have 8-core, 16-thread CPUs. That's where the world's going. And since consoles are optimized and PCs aren't, unfortunately, that's just the way of things, then you certainly aren't going to want to have less than an 8-core, 16-thread chip. Take a look at The Division 2. Now, this is a very well-optimized game. And on the 1500X in the upper right-hand corner, it's running amazingly well. We're using virtually all of the CPU, but it does, in fact, run pretty well. The six core chip runs it better. We're using all six cores and we're using some of the hyper threading. But take a look at the 1700X. We're above 50%. We're using all the cores. We're using all the cores in multiple games that I've shown you today. If you already have a six core chip, you're fine. Keep it for another year. I've been asked this multiple times by people. Well, do I have to replace it? If you own a 1600 or 1600X, if you own an i7-6800K or an i7-5820K, the old uh, Haswell E or Broadwell E six core chips, great. You don't keep them for another year. If it's doing the job for you, you're fine. But if you're making a new purchase today, the price difference between a 2600X and a 2700X or a 3600X and a 3700X is not that large. Don't leap over dollars to pick up pennies. If you're in the market for a new processor today, I find it very difficult to find a reason to buy anything less than an 8-core 16-thread CPU. I'm not even going to read the 1300X numbers. The thing performs terribly. In terms of 4-core 8-threads, it does a respectable job, and I would absolutely play the Division 2 on a Ryzen 5 1500X or similar 4-core 8-thread chip. If you have an i7-4770K or 4790K from five years ago, sure, you can keep using it for a bit longer. It still does the job mostly for the most part. It does not have much of a future in front of it, but it will do the job if you want to wait for another year. Likewise, as I said, if you have a 6-core 12-thread chip and you're not ready to upgrade, maybe you want to wait for Zen 3 coming soon, great, keep it. You can get by with it for another year or so. But if you are buying today... Yes, it's all about the eight cores. Now, interestingly enough, when you look at this chart, you'll notice that the Ryzen 7 1700X benchmarked slower on the average and 1% low numbers than the 1600X. Part of that's clock speed. There's a 200 megahertz difference between those two. And I appreciate that. When I retest these, I will certainly uh, make sure that doesn't happen again. I really shouldn't have done that here. My apologies. But again, it comes down to what are you doing today versus what do you want to do in the future for existing machines versus new purchases, multitasking, an actual usable Windows computer with stuff running on it. I fully realize I'm beating the drums very hard on 8-core 16 threads. This comes from decades in the computer business. This comes from years of benchmarking and testing. And this comes from the fact that I have all of them and I'm testing them and using them in a comparative way. If you ever listen to my advice on anything, if you're going out to buy something now at the end of 2019, it should have eight cores in it. On the flip side, Steep doesn't remotely care, so there are certainly exceptions to the rule. My statement is not an absolute one. It's just a, if you want to future-proof yourself and have the option of playing new games and multitasking, it's eight cores, but not in this case. On the flip side, Total War Three Kingdoms clearly wants a six core chip versus the four core chip, and it does use an eight core chip. This is the game's built in benchmark. I'm not showing it to you because frankly, it doesn't tell you anything you haven't already seen in this video. 
If you build large armies and you play games like this, then more CPU power. Same thing is true with Civilization, any sort of game like that, where you just have a million things going on and a million units to manage. More CPU power is better than less. Thanks to everybody for watching all of those benchmarks. If you watch the whole thing without fast forwarding, two gold stars for you, it's greatly appreciated. In short, you do not need eight core CPUs to play any games today in 2019 or 2020, and perhaps even 2021 beyond that. That will not hold forever, however, because the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Scarlet are coming in late 2020, about a year from when this is being recorded, and those are going to have basically the equivalent of a slightly downclocked Ryzen 7 3700X, 8-core 16-thread Zen 2 at about 3 to 3.2 gigahertz with Navi graphics, a downclocked version of the RX 5700 that you saw in today's video. Games will start to be developed with that kind of hardware in mind, and since PCs are not as optimized as consoles, because the hardware configurations vary so much and Windows is running underneath, you will need more, not less hardware, to play at the same sort of detail settings and configurations that you're going to see on the upcoming next generation consoles. If you want to buy a CPU today and you really only care about two or three years of future gaming, six cores, 12 threads are absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with a six core, 12 thread CPU today, but don't expect five years out of it. I think you're going to have a real problem trying to make that last five years. My crystal ball's in the shop. Who knows whether or not that's going to turn out to be 100% true, but I will be shocked, downright shocked, if there are legitimately not games in the next five years that actually require eight cores to be what at least I would consider to be smooth and playable. However, having said all of that, do you want to live stream your games? Do you want to be able to stream to Twitch or Mixer or YouTube? Generally, I recommend that you have two more cores than your game actually needs because your OBS or XSplit window program needs something. Maybe you've got a voice chat, TeamSpeak 3 or Discord or something else running. Uh, you've got some overhead involved in actually sending that data online. You've got your web browser open with your dashboard and chat open. All of that takes something extra. In that case, I think an 8-core CPU today is ideal for most people. If most games run really well on a 6-core, 12-thread processor, 8-core, 16-threads gives you plenty of room for live streaming overhead without it dramatically affecting your performance. Depends upon what you play. If you live stream The Sims 4, then, well, frankly, you don't need an 8-core CPU. But if you want to live stream Ghost Recon Breakpoint, oh, you better believe you need an 8-core CPU for that. That would be brutal on anything less doable but choppy and not as smooth as you might like to see. The same is true, of course, for content creation if you're doing anything like that. Even if you're just recording locally, it adds something. It doesn't add as much as live streaming does, but it adds something. And it's something to think about when you make your purchase as to whether you want to have the option to live stream future games. At the end of 2019, when I'm recording this, the deal, full stop, is a Ryzen 7 2700X. Currently available on both Amazon and Newegg, brand new for $170. Eight cores, 16 threads, 4.2 gigahertz in gaming, 4.0 gigahertz when you're doing uh, heavy content creation tasks. Includes a Wraith Prism RGB cooler in the box that is absolutely good enough to cool the CPU. You can install it on a $100 B450 MSI Tomahawk or similar motherboard. You don't have to spend a ton of money on a motherboard. That is absolutely full stop the value for the money, both for performance today, gaming up to about 100 frames per second in most cases with an appropriate video card at any resolution. It'll do 100 frames per second without a problem. Future gaming due to the eight cores, the ability to live stream, multitask, have multiple windows open. The price savings to go to a Ryzen 5 1600 are no longer worth it. The prices have come down and compressed. In my opinion, spend the extra $50 between a Ryzen 5 2600 and a Ryzen 7 2700X. That $50 may very well push out your next CPU purchase one or two years, letting you just enjoy your computer and have amazing performance in the meantime, plus more clock speed today. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you love it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big, huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, you know where the comment section is. Links in the video description. 
The first generation chips, of course, are all sold out at this point new, but I will link to them on eBay. You can find some amazing values. If you're really on a budget, a Ryzen 7 1700X can be found for about $100-ish on eBay at the moment, and that's just crazy value for the money. About 700 megahertz slower than a 2700X, but less expensive, and if you're looking for an absolute deal, then there you go. I'll also link to the 2700X, which is currently the best deal going at the moment, as well as a few other things that I've talked about. You can also support the channel using Patreon and Floatplane if you want early access to the benchmark charts. In fact, as I'm recording this, those have already been posted over to Patreon and the filming scripts that I use when I'm recording these videos. Patrons get to see those early. You can also see these videos early on Floatplane using the link in the video description below. Go check that out. Thanks so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.